Welcome to the Statistic NDD YouTube channel. Today I want to talk about a specific aspect of the R programming language and that is vectorization. Coming from other programming languages like C or C++ or Visual Basic or VBA, you might think in terms of loops. You might write a lot of loops to solve problems that require iteration and we'll see that you can do that in R as well. But loops tend to have a bad reputation in R and we'll see that in many cases loops can be avoided and today we'll see a simple example of that vectorization or vectorized functions and we'll see what is meant by that in R. For the example, today we're using the Star Wars data which ships with the dplyr package. dplyr is part of the tidyverse so I can just load the tidyverse and we'll have a look at the data set and you see it contains 87 characters from the Star Wars movies uh, like names and um, a lot of characteristics of the figures there and the species and you see it's a little bit of an unusual data set because the last three variables are actually lists um, because each character can appear in several films, can have several vehicles and so on but today we won't worry too much about that and we'll focus on species and names. So let's have a look which species are present in this data set and we see we have 37 species altogether but many of them appear only once or twice maybe so at the bottom of this slide I'm using the forecats package it's got very convenient functions to work with factors factor lump min um, we can very conveniently recode the species so that all species that don't appear at least three times are summed up as others and then I'm using one more line of code to sort the result by frequency and then put the others category at the back of the results. So we only have three species that appear at least three times, 35 humans, six droids, three gungans and then 39 others and for the sake of simplicity we'll now focus on the droids. So let's have a look um, and we start out by writing a for loop so First I just filter the data set for the droids and then I'm using the pull function from the dplyr package which gives me a simple vector instead of a data frame so this is convenient um, to work with and then I'm writing a for loop to loop along this vector of droids and to print the names of these six droids. So note how inside the for loop I make use of this iterator i so in each um, run on each iteration of the loop I access the ith element of the droids vector and print the name to the screen. So this works in R but it's not typical R code. It's how you might approach um, tasks coming from other programming languages but we'll see in a moment that we can write simpler R code and that in many cases we don't need to write loops like this. But before we simplify the code we'll take it one step further and let's also think about the length of the names, how many characters are in each name. We see that the first couple of droids all have the same number of characters but then the last two we have also a longer one and a shorter droid name. So we can um, also make use of that and inspect that a little bit more and print the number of characters to the screen and again I'm using a for loop with the i iterator and then I have this paste function to paste together my um, result sentence putting the name of the droid and again using this iterator i and using the nchar function to um, find out the number of characters in each name and again accessing the ith element of the droids vector to create this result. So the first four droids all um, their names all comprise of five characters and then we have one with six characters and one with three characters. Um, so how can we avoid the loop now? Well that's simple because the functions that we're using are actually vectorized and what this means is um, somebody has to write a loop but it doesn't have to be us. The functions um, so to say um, have their own looping construct built in um, or the technical term is vectorization so to just get the names of the droids I can simply write droids. This is short for print droids and it gives me the six names. So we get each element of this vector without us writing a loop. And conveniently we see at the bottom 
that this also works for the slightly more complicated example where we want to print the number of characters of each name to the screen. We can do that without using an explicit for loop because the functions that we're using here like paste and end char to determine the number of characters are vectorized, which means that we can um, pass them a vector and they will um, loop through this vector element by element and give us the results. So here a simple, well, not too simple maybe, but a one-liner without an explicit loop gives us the same result that we saw before, the six names and the number of characters for each name. So this is what vectorization means in R. Of course, a lot more could be said about iteration. This video is just meant to give you a quick introduction of a simple use case. Um, there are more complicated use cases of iteration. So just to give you a quick outlook, um, in base R you can make use of the apply family of functions to iterate over elements of vectors and lists. So there are functions like apply, l apply where the l stands for list, s apply where the s stands for simplify and the result can be simplified to a vector or a matrix if possible, t apply to um, apply functions to subgroups of your data and so on. And if you get more into functional programming I recommend um, taking a look at the per package um, it does similar things to these base R functions, but it's got a few advantages. Um, most importantly, um, the function parameters are named more consistently, which is very convenient for programming, and you get type stability, which is especially not the case for S apply. So in the per package, which is part of the tidyverse, um, you get map functions, and then you have variants of that indicating the object type or data type of the return value, like map int for integer, map double, map character, map data frame by row, by column, and so on. And there are also walk variants when you call functions purely for side effects and you don't want anything printed to the screen. Um, a side effect is, for example, creating a plot or saving a file. But maybe this is a topic for a later video. For now, I just wanted to show you quickly that in many cases in R you can avoid loops, not in all cases. If you want to find out more, you can also Read the R for Data Science book by Head Wickham and Garrett Grolemont, which has a chapter in it on iteration. And maybe Headley's advanced R book can also be helpful to find out more about how R works. Well, that was it for today. I hope you found this useful. If you did, um, give the video a thumbs up. Consider subscribing the channel if you haven't already. That really helps. All the best for your own data analysis, for your R projects, your journey in R. See you next time. Ciao.